Good evening, University of Ghana students. My name is Janet Mamesewa Akofol Awoche. As you know, I'm your SRC secretary, and today I am at the IPO. IPO stands for International Programs Office. Okay, so um, the International Programs Office um, is like, let's say, the Foreign Affairs Ministry of the University of Ghana. And today I'm here with Mr. Daniel Homeku who is um, the assistant registrar of the International Programs Office and he's going to tell us all about um, the International Programs of Office. So, Mr. Homeku, good evening once again. Good evening, Mami Sawa. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. So, we are just here to find out more about the IPO and the programs that it, it offers for um, students and what students can gain from the IPO. So, um, first of all, what's the IPO? What is it all about? IPO is International Programs Office. Um, International Programs Office was set up some 20 years ago, um, specifically in 1997. So it was set up to better manage uh, international students, faculty, both inbound and outbound, and um, other relationships that University of Ghana had with um, external institutions. So basically, International Programs Office manages the external affairs of the university. So it is the external affairs of the university. Yes. We receive students from all over the world every year. And uh, in every year, we receive not less than 50 um, students coming from 50, over 50 countries coming to the University of Ghana. And uh, they come to study in all the colleges that we have at the university. Um, we equally send students and faculty members out on exchange programs and study abroad. Yes. Um, so we would like to know more about the exchange programs. Are they only for like students coming into Ghana or are there chances for students in Ghana to go and Basically, when we, when we talk about students having, um, you know, year abroad, it, I think it's quite different. And I don't know what exactly, are you in charge of year abroad or what kind of other programs do we have? Yes, um, you rightly said it. Um, students of the University of Ghana are not well informed about International Programs Office. It will interest you to note that um, a lot of students see International House, they pass by it, we have programs, we organize programs for students, both international students and Ghanaian students and other students who are studying here and only foreign students attend the programs. University of Ghana students think that we only receive students from abroad but it's a two-way affair. Um, um, we also send students and as I said faculty members who are going out to study or for, for other programs. Um, here at the University of Ghana, um, we have the year abroad, which you know and you've mentioned. We don't work directly on the year abroad, but we work with the various units for students who are offering language. The Chinese section, the French section, the Spanish section, the Swahili section, and all the modern languages. We work with them. We provide students who are going on year abroad with um, orientation before they leave. That's pre-departure orientation. And I do that with Victoria Baku. Victoria Baku is the coordinator of uh, the Study Abroad Center here at the University of Ghana. And when I mention the Study Abroad Center, that is one center we would like all Ghanaian students, all Ghanaian students to visit and avail themselves to the various opportunities we have for University of Ghana students to study abroad, both undergraduate, graduate programs to study abroad. There are a number of opportunities out there for University of Ghana students to have a semester or a year abroad or even the whole program being offered abroad. We have opportunities for PhD students to do what we now call the apprenticeship. That's the one year experiential learning abroad and come back. It is very important and it's very exciting. 
um, I, I, I think it will be exciting. A lot of Ghanaian students actually also want to experience, you know, what happens outside of Ghana. Um, but as you have already mentioned, you've, you've, spoke, you've, you've spoken a lot about um, the lang uh, languages, like students who are offering the language programs. But are there chances for, let's say, nursing students, political science students, uh, radiography students or let's say engineering students yes. too? Yes, yes. There are, there are a number of opportunities out there for them. Um, recently we just received uh, from Sussex University in UK an offer for two students to come over during uh, the summer program, that's the long vacation program, to do internship. And it, it is something that is linked to political science, law and sociology department. And we've, we normally send this nomination, call for nominations to this department. We have a number of opportunities for political science students. We have a number of opportunities for students doing nursing in Alberta. We have University of Alberta students who are in partnership with University of Ghana students and the um, School of Nursing for that matter. Apart from that, we have various faculty-led programs or collaborations. Um, which are special to various units or departments. Recently, we signed an agreement with ISC Lille in France, and it is linked to the agri department. And there is an opportunity for faculty exchange, for student exchanges, and we have another special program um, students can avail themselves to on ICEP, International Student Exchange Program. ICEP is a study abroad uh, provider. At the same time, University of Ghana is a member of ICEP. And every year, we offer, or the university offers students opportunity to study in ICEP member countries, mostly in the US, in Canada, Costa Rica, and other countries, you name it. And uh, a number of opportunities that um, students should avail themselves to. So, um, how are the How can we assess the opportunities? Do we have to walk into the international house, or can we go online to find out what, what, um, what, how, what, um, you know, um, um, opportunities are available for students? How do students find out that there is this opportunity available? That's a very good question. Um, as SRC secretary, you have a lot of work to do um, to help us. We we put a lot of information on the website. We put a lot of information on uh, to UG students through UG student mail, emails. Every student admitted to the University of Ghana is given an email address, and we have to send this call for nomination and this call for opportunities um, to student list, and we send them by UG student list. That is one way of giving information to students on these opportunities to study abroad. So we would encourage you to also encourage your um, colleagues to use their email addresses, their UG email addresses. They should feel proud of being in the Premier University to use their email addresses. And you, they, they would see all these opportunities coming up. The second issue is about not um, checking on our website. The university belongs to you, students. So it is important for you to um, check the website from time to time to see which opportunities are available to students. Um, we also send these calls or opportunities through the heads of departments. And then you mentioned whether they could walk in, students could walk in. Yes, you could walk into the study abroad center just located at the foyer or the entrance of the international house, just on the right side when you enter. Victoria is there, Jijo is there to help you go through the opportunities that we have. When we sign agreement and students don't avail themselves to the opportunities, then it means that we are doing no work. So we encourage you to avail yourself to these opportunities. So, um, that's wonderful. Um, how is it usually like? Because do you have to be rich to, you know, assess some of these opportunities? Because I know traveling outside may cost a bit and... Um, we say that not all fingers are equal. So maybe I want to travel, but maybe is it expensive? Do we have to pay or is it fully funded or how does it work? No, you don't have to be rich to travel um, in some of these programs. 
Some of them are free, totally sponsored. If uh, living expenses, accommodation and everything is sponsored. But a few are uh, partially sponsored. But for the ISEP program, you just pay a little and then you make provision for your own um, airfare and um, you take the position of someone who is being posted to the University of Ghana to take your place. So accommodation and perhaps the meal plan is catered for after you've paid just a token to ISEP and the University of Ghana. So you don't have to be extremely rich to participate in this program. It is a, a matter of planning. And you know, um, I know you, you, you agree with me, parents pay for some of their wars to enjoy holidays abroad in UK, in the US, and so on. It is better to sponsor the student or your, your wards to study abroad to have a feel of what other universities outside the country are enjoy their facilities, um, see what educational opportunities are out there, and network. It's very important for every student to at least experience study abroad once in your four year or maybe your master's program. Yes. So does one have to have a, her own passport first? And also with the visa issues, when you, uh, maybe when there are opportunities available, do you need, would you now have to fight for your own visa or the school or the, you know, um, the, the, the organization in charge will cater for all your visas and everything for you? Once you are a University of Ghana student, I will urge you to get a passport as soon as possible because opportunities may come anytime. So I will urge every student to have a passport. Your department can nominate you, your parents can decide to sponsor you to study abroad for just a semester, any opportunity could come. So you need to have your own passport, um, which is not expensive, you know. And um, this time I know it's been done online, so you can get it easily. Um, in the case of visa um, application, we assist the student with support letters. Yes, we assist students with support letters. We, on a few occasions, we've had students um, who could not meet the requirement, not because um, they didn't have all the documents, but a situation where um, what we told them, or the orientation we, we, we took them through before the visa appointment, they didn't adhere to it. So they come back and sometimes we appeal and the embassies, especially the U.S. and the Canadian embassy, um, we're working closely with them. So this time we're having few issues and problems. But I will quickly add also that we don't encourage final year, final semester students to go on study abroad. Uh, yes, um, we've, we've had a few um, unfortunate incidents of one or two students not coming back. Yes, so we don't encourage that. Yes. Okay. So, um, also, I want to know, is um, there are different programs, and you know, the, with the languages, when they go um, outside for the languages program, when they come back, they have to stay in school for another year. Is it the same with um, what you're talking about right now, or is it a totally different thing, and you can graduate, you know, ride right with your mates? That's a very good question, too. Um, whilst you are out there studying on study abroad, um, your grades that you transfer count towards your graduation. You don't have to cut short or defer your program. You don't have to come back and repeat like the study, the language abroad or those doing language. You don't have to do that. You are in level 300, for example. The first semester, you go on study abroad for a semester, you come back, the grades you make in a partner institution like Simon Fraser University in Canada, with Laurie University in Canada, or any other university, you transfer those grades onto your academic record. And the academic office here at the University of Ghana, International Programs Office, we have someone there who is purposely responsible for ensuring that the grades are transferred onto your academic record. And Mr. Eklu, who is the exams coordinator, he does that with his team.
All right, that's nice to know because it was kind of a worry that you have to come back and, you know, everybody will graduate before you. No, end. you don't have to do that. You yeah. don't have to do okay. that. Okay, so that's fine. Also, um, let's talk a bit about the international students who come inside to Ghana. Um, why did they come? Why are, why are they here? And what is, what, is, what is very special about University of Ghana that if they are watching, they should choose University of Ghana, um, you know, over other universities in Africa? Um, I would say that University of Ghana is one of the very, very reputable institutions of higher learning. A premier university in Ghana, and we at the International Programs Office make sure that we market or project the university um, to the international community or international students. Apart from the study abroad providers who bring students here, we respond quickly to all their inquiries. Most of the time we have sections with them to find out why they chose University of Ghana over other universities in Africa, for example. And they make us aware that we respond quickly to their email inquiries. We provide all the information that they need apart from what they see on our web pages. Right now, when you go on International Programs Office web pages, you will love it. It is very exciting. It is something that the dean has made sure that, or may, let me say, deans over the period have made sure it's very exciting, very interactive, and you name it. We, we are all on all the social media platforms. Yes, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yes, and we provide all the information that students need. And for students to make a decision, they need information. And all the information is out there, so they don't have any excuse. So apart from that, University of Ghana offers international students a flexible choice in courses that they, they, they take. Students can take courses from various departments, provided the teaching timetable will not clash. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we make provision for them once the teaching timetable time table doesn't clash. And academic, um, let me say, the exam timetable clashes. The uh, provision is made for them to write exams. Yes, so this is something we learned from other universities. And um, I think it should apply to all University of Ghana students, not only international students. Because we, we are aimed for all students, you know. Yes, so it's something we should be flexible. No one should be left behind. Yes, no one should be left behind. And then um, students come here also because of the peaceful nature of the country. Yes, Ghana is a very peaceful country. Uh, they don't get stopped on the street for any policeman or peace officer to ask them about their passport or nationality or where they're coming from. Attacks is zero. Our campus is a very peaceful campus. We make sure we provide them with all the information um, to, to get accommodation and any other thing you may think of, apart from the academic life on campus. We also organize trips for them around the country, you know. Yes, they would like to know places around the country where you and I have not been to. Yeah. One of my friends went to, I think, um, Sogakope or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so have that you been was. There? No, I haven't. Yeah. yeah, but then maybe I'll join one of the trips uh, sure. one of these days. Sure. Okay, so to put the ice on the cake, what are some of the countries? Which countries do um, students in Ghana um, normally do the IPO visit um, for the programs? Yes, um, to answer that question, I, I would let you know that we have different categories of international students. We have the short term students. Um, we have, they are called the visiting students. They come for just a semester or a year and go back to their home institution. We have the regular international students. Uh, most of them come from the sub-region. And they come for the whole bachelor's program or master's program or PhD. Um, and then we have those who come for English proficiency. They come from the Francophone countries. Some are now coming from China, Korea, and so on. And then we have the occasional students. Occasional students are students who are doing research and they come here to just sit in the class. They enroll, pay their fees, but they don't write exams. They are just interested, for example, in African politics, in African studies, in any course being offered here at the University of Ghana. And most of them come at a graduate level. 
and we have research affiliates who come to do research for a period of time and they are attached to a department or someone who is a professor who is a mentor and they will be attached to that mentor and then we have full bright scholars and people um, researchers who come on Fox scholarships and so on so um, the various categories of students um, would determine um, um, how we handle them. Okay. Yes. So Nigeria is the highest number of students where we get our highest number of regular students, okay. regular international students. And the US and Canada, the short term students, that's the visiting students. Students come from Angola um, all the way to Zimbabwe and Zambia. So from A to Z. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Um, Togo, Burkina Faso. Uh, students coming from South Africa, well, not really, once in a while you see a student coming to do a master's program or a PhD coming from Southern Africa or are South Africa. From, are people from Asia because I've not seen, okay, I think I've seen some Koreans, but I've not seen people like Indians or Pakistanis. There are Indians. There are Indians. Once in a while we get Indians coming to study here. And most of them are um, wards of expatriates who are here and a few, once in a while, you see um, a student coming from India to just take um, a semester or do a semester and go back to a university, perhaps in the U.S. Yes. Right. So I think um, uh, that's it. We are done with the interview. And uh, Or if Mr. Homeku has any other thing to add. You didn't tell us much about the administrative processes or how... <laughs> Aside students, what do you do? Yes, apart from students, that's a good one. <laughs> student services, we make sure that the university has good relationship with um, partner institutions around the world. So when you talk about MOUs, signing agreements, it falls squarely uh, in our domain. We make sure that um, we fine tune MOUs or agreements we may have with institutions wanting to collaborate with us, University of Ghana, we make sure we look out for our interest. And uh, we work closely with the Office of Legal Counsel. And then we fine tune the MOU. It's a back and forth thing. And then we finish it up and we make sure the right signatory at the University of Ghana, who is the Vice Chancellor or the Pro Vice Chancellor in charge of academic and student affairs will sign. And then my Dean, Prof. Amadigraft Akins, would witness. We have a, vi a very vibrant Dean, making sure that all the administrative work goes on well here. We make sure um, students don't go out for their resident permit, their visas, and so on. So we have the immigration office right here in international house, making sure that they provide all the services students need. We lend the student a shoulder to cry on, yes, in times of any challenges, yes. So administratively, we do a whole lot of things, right from making sure we give students the right information to apply, process the application, um, to learn firsthand some of their challenges um, and how things have gone so far. Um, this is a brainchild of the, the current Dean, Prof. Amadi Graft Akins, and she, she's doing so well. I must say, we, we're learning a lot from her. Yes, sure. So, dear University of Ghana students, um, I think I'm going to bring the interview to a close, and you've heard it for yourself. There are lots of opportunities out there for you here at the International Programs Office, and you have to you know, go online or come here and come and read or find out what is available for you. So um, with this, we want to say a very big thank you to Mr. Uh, Homeku uh, for your time. We thank you so much for your time yes, and for, it you know. Mm. Yes, so um, very good to meet you, and I hope that students will you know, troop here to find out what you also have for them. Yeah, so thank welcome. you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Okay. So keep watching um, the SRC YouTube channel and Campus Connect TV.